The industry will no longer be subject to confusion. Everybody will be able to see the entire picture. Welcome to the future. Danger, danger, danger. You must be an experienced chemist before you try any of this. Yada, yada. So tired of these chemical gatekeepers. Yes, hydrogen can blow up. Yes, the solvent is flammable. Yes, palladium over carbon is flammable. Yes, you need to understand it in order to safely use it like everything else in life. But you know what makes an experienced chemist an experienced chemist? Experience. Don't let this scare you guys. You're going to do just fine. In the end of the video, we are going to be going over the safety precautions that you need to get you up to snuff in no time. Here we go. Now, your supply list. The first thing that we need to do is set up the reactor. Now, I could teach you how to do this on a reactor size pilot scale, but I have a feeling that you already know how. If you already knew how to do that, then you wouldn't need to watch this video. So, we want to have a boiling flask, a heating mantle, and or hot plate. CBD oil, ethanol, nitrogen, hydrogen, palladium over carbon, filtration apparatus, sea light, and some balloons and septums to hook up and get everything perfectly going. The first thing that we want to do is to dissolve our CBD oil in a three to one ratio of ethanol to oil. We can do that by heating the ethanol up to about 40 degrees Celsius and mixing it with our CBD oil until everything is homogenous. I like to use 200 proof cane ethanol for this procedure. We can draw this into a syringe for small scale hydrogenations or we can place it into a transfer container where you will use the cannula method to transfer the material in the next couple of minutes. Now, to prepare for the cannula tech, place your dissolved CBD oil into a separate flask and cover with a septum. Use a vacuum needle to draw out oxygen and then backfill it with inert gas. Once you are ready to transfer, we will place a needle with positive inert pressure from our shrink line in our shrink line from our shrink line into our transfer container with another needle coming from the transfer container into the reaction vessel. Once we are ready to start the transfer, slowly place the needle into the transfer solution, allowing the positive pressure to push it over into the reaction flask. More on all of that coming up in just a minute. Next, we will prepare, so we've got our solution prepared. The next thing that we want to prepare is our 10%, which is the catalyst you're going to be using in this reaction. But we first want to evacuate our reaction flask because we do not want palladium over carbon dust to ignite with air, and this can happen. Nobody wants that. We will use our vacuum to purge our reaction flask and make sure there is no atmosphere or air in it. We will then use our nitrogen balloon to hold an inert pressure in our flask while we add our palladium over carbon. Once we have added our palladium over carbon, we will rinse the flask neck, blah, 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 with ethanol under a, or using a syringe under nitrogen. Now, once we've done that, we can begin stirring that material. So now we've got everything, our catalyst is in our solvent, and it is ready to begin the reaction process, and we've prepared that under an inert atmosphere, so whenever we get ready to add anything, we have a dry, stable atmosphere where none of these catalysts are going to come into contact with anything that could spell out danger for us. The next thing that we want to do is go ahead and add our CBD solution. We can use either the small scale syringe method or the cannula technique that we talked about earlier. We want to be adding our CBD solution under the nitrogen or argon pressure to make sure that we retain a dry reaction vessel. It is important that everything is set in place and clamped together tightly so that nothing moves on us mid-reaction. There's nothing more irritating than that. Prepare your hydrogen balloons with a lure lock needle, making sure that this needle is closed before plugging it into the septum. You can use a constant pressure hydrogen supply if you choose as well, but that also comes with the risk of keeping more volatiles near the reaction. 
I like to get my hydrogen from outside of the laboratory and then use a balloon for anything small to mid scale, which is where most of our hydrogenations are going to take place anyway. Most of the time, if you have a constant pressure hydrogenation going, you're probably using a hydrogenation reactor, which really keeps things a lot more industrial safe in that capacity. Now, I want to remove the nitrogen from the reaction flask and insert the hydrogen balloon. Once again, making sure that the needle is closed. This can all be done at room temperature, but I want to make sure that I do not run out of hydrogen during consumption or for consumption. I can do this one of two ways experience, knowing how much hydrogen approximately will be consumed and planning accordingly, or I can set up multiple balloons to make sure that the feed rate is adequate throughout the reactionary process. Before I begin allowing the hydrogen to travel into the reaction flask, I want to use my vacuum needle and inert balloon to evacuate and backfill three separate times. This is very important as the most danger that could encapsulate this entire reaction comes from not adequately making sure that we have a dry and inert reactionary uh, medium. That means that I must backfill or vacuum and then backfill with nitrogen or argon three separate times before I am ready to begin adding hydrogen. Once I open the lure lock, we will successfully have set up our hydrogenation reaction and we will let this run for 16 hours. Most of the time overnight is plenty sufficient for this process. So make sure that you have evacuated three times, then you can go ahead and allow the hydrogen to come into the reaction. Now once you have come back after your 16 hour period and you have completed the reaction, you may pull your hydrogen balloon out of the flask septum, hold it upright towards the vent in your glove box, and gently squeeze it out. Now, there's still hydrogen inside of our reaction flask, and that means that we will need to evacuate it once again using our vacuum needle and nitrogen balloon. Once we have done this, we can relatively assume that the internal flask atmosphere is nitrogen and relatively safe to open at least as we pour it across our filtration apparatus. Bringing in to the filtration apparatus, that is our next step. We must remember that there is still palladium over carbon inside of our reaction flask, which is very flammable. So we will need to set up our filtration apparatus to ensure that we can remove the catalyst and dispose of it safely. You can follow the apparatus shown in this video for a small scale or for large scale uh, apparatuses. I like to run a Buchner funnel over an Erlenmeyer flask under a nitrogen blanket. Now for this, I don't really use the vacuum attached to the Erlenmeyer flask like you normally would in a Buchner funnel filtration setup because like we'll talk about in this next couple of minutes, we do not ever want that catalyst to run dry because that is where our significant risk for ignition or spontaneous combustion will occur. So by using a vacuum, it kind of forces everything down quickly. I will still use the Buchner funnel filtration setup. However, I will just make sure that I allow gravity to do the work for me, monitoring this reaction the entire time or this filtration the entire time. If you need some future guidance in setting up this infrastructure, don't forget to sign up to literally the only one of its kind Discord that you can find in the comment pinned section. This group is filled with amazing chemists and professionals and I myself am on there all the time giving great tips, tricks, solutions, SOPs, you name it. It's a great deal, so don't mess out. Now, in our filtration apparatus, connect our sea light filtration column to another similar sized RBF, round bottom flask. Now we want it to be similar size because we obviously don't want to overfill. So whatever the solution is inside of our reactionary vessel, we should probably leave a little bit overscaled to get with some of the ethanol that we're going to be washing through to make sure that palladium over carbon never becomes dry. We want our new filtration apparatus RBF to be able to encapsulate or handle all of the solution that we will be using. We will then want to use the 200 proof ethanol to wet our sea light bed for filtration. It is very important to always have a solvent layer over the sea light bed. Once we do that, we will begin to pour the reaction mixture into the filtration column and allow gravity to filter the palladium over carbon out of the solution. 
we must never let this catalyst dry out. So it is very important to watch over this with an ethanol squirt bottle that you could always add a solvent barrier if necessary. This isn't a filtration that you should walk away from. You should always keep your eyes on this thing. If the level gets low and there is not enough solvent over the bed, you will have a possible fire. So keep wetting the bed no pun intended. We can then dispose of the sea light bed and or filtration disc and dispense palladium over and dispense palladium over carbon in both water and a solution of hydrochloric acid. Do not just throw this out into the trash without sealing this hazardous material in water or neutralizing with hydrochloric acid. That is a good way to get a fire inside of your trash can. Now it is time to go to our favorite rotary evaporator and evaporate all of the ethanol that we used during the reaction. Now, you may have noticed that this video title also says how to make HHCP. This method is the same method used for any cannabinoid hydrogenation. Instead of using CBD oil as the feedstock, you will use oil from any other cannabinoid instead. If doing Delta 9, the only step that I really like to add when making Delta 9 HHC is just to go ahead and enrich that Delta 9 oil with THCA powder to ensure that I can really get those R combinations or concentrations much higher as there seems to be plenty of scientific study that the, R, the higher the R percentage, the more psychoactivity it actually presents. Now, a couple of safety precautions. Always double check and then triple check your setup. Always inspect your glass for integrity and dry it appropriately before you use it in the reaction. Always remove any unnecessary flammables or catalysts from the reactions if possible. Alert all other employees about your intention to hydrogenate. Keep another person with you at all times. For small lab fires, a chemical fire extinguisher and a bucket of sand will go a long way for keeping things under control should a critical room situation develop. Do you use hydrogenated cannabinoids? What is your experience with them? Do you think that you have what it takes to perform this reaction in your own laboratory? I think you do. If you don't, then how do you think we can help you achieve that goal? I tried to make this quote unquote difficult process as easy to understand as possible. So if you enjoyed it, definitely drop us a like, subscribe, smash that bell button notification. It definitely helps us out way more than you know, primes that algorithm up. And that's all that I have for you today. It has been a blessing, a privilege, nay, an honor to be able to teach and consult with you. We'll see you in the next video. Peace out, my friends.